Hello, flutists and flautists and flute tubers. I've had a couple of requests very recently to do a video on flute dynamics. And that's actually a very complicated, big topic. It's very complex because there are a lot of different things we do to make dynamics. But today I'm going to give you just a basic overview on dynamics, some things to think about in different registers and some things to keep consistent in all registers. And I'm sure we'll revisit dynamics and some subtopics of dynamics in future episodes. So to start, well, actually to start, someone dared me to say this, so smash the subscribe button, hit the, ring the notification bell, and be sure to like this video. Also be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I will be describing a great little exercise for super soft dynamics and tapers that I don't think I've told any of my students for at least a year or two. So you'll want to have that exercise. So let's talk about dynamics in a broad overview kind of way. Dynamics are made with your volume of air. So the more sound you want, the greater volume of air you have to use. But that's not all there is to it. Airspeed is also involved. So the way that you create greater airspeed is to put all that air you're blowing through not too large of an aperture between your lips. So when I'm playing loud, I first of all think, you know, blow a lot of air, and then I make sure that that aperture doesn't get too big so that I can focus my sound and I can still make use of all that air that's coming out of my lips to help make a big loud dynamic. If your aperture hole is too big, you lose air speed, your tone loses some of its focus, and it will just end up sounding like you're overblowing. So keeping your aperture small and your airstream focused will increase the volume and speed of your air. And then when the air goes across your flute embouchure hole and it hits this far edge, it will increase the force that the air hits that edge with and that will give you a louder dynamic. So to make a loud dynamic, the things that you need to think about are, be sure that you're using a lot of air, a lot of air volume. Be sure that your aperture is not too big and that the airstream is focused. Also be sure, we sort of mentioned this, um, be sure there's enough space. Don't cover your embouchure hole too much here. Um, because then you won't have as much space to hit this far edge and the air won't be able to hit it as forcefully and get you as big of a sound. So you don't want to cover too much of your embouchure hole, you want to keep back on this embouchure plate enough. And then additionally, just focus on staying relaxed. We tend to tense up whenever we're trying hard to do something. So we tense up in loud dynamics, we tense up in soft dynamics. Just think of staying very relaxed. For soft dynamics, even though we talked about air speed in loud dynamics, in your soft dynamics, don't think about making them with low air speed. I do think about using lots of air speed for louds, but I never think about that for softs because we don't want you to ease off of your support. And if you think of slow air speed, that will tend to make you ease off of the support. So keep thinking of energized air with a lot of support in your softs. Really for soft dynamics, what you wanna focus on is having a small amount of air volume. And that means you're gonna to have to close your lips to make that aperture hole smaller in the soft dynamics. That's why when I play soft in the high register, my lips are barely even open. They're just kind of cracked open because I need a lot of airspeed to play in the very highest register, but if I have both speed and volume, it's gonna be loud. So I have to have very little volume in order to get soft in the high register. So general guidelines for soft dynamics are, keep the support just as solid as it was in your loud dynamics. Don't back off of the support. Keep your aperture very small. I know we said small for loud, but very small for softs. Of course it should be smaller in softs than in louds. 
And the way we do that is you bring your lips forward, you bring your jaw forward so that you close off the hole without tensing or tightening. It should just close off very naturally. And we'll talk more about how to do that in just a little bit. Number three is make your dynamics with supported and energized but small volume of air. And number four is just like in the loud dynamics, just don't tense up. <laughs> You'll be tempted to tense up in different ways. You'll be tempted to tense up in your throat, in your mouth, and you just need to keep all of that relaxed and open when you're soft and rely on your support to get the energy in your airstream. Another thing I want to talk about in our quest to do a broad dynamic overview without getting too complicated is to mention that there are two really important things to keep in mind that should never change with your changing dynamic level. And those two things are support and air angle. When we play loud, we're kind of forced to support. We're just going to support. But unfortunately, it's far too easy to play softly without support. So you might be tempted in your softs not to support as much, and you might feel your support easing off in softs. Don't let that happen. Be sure you're absolutely just as supported in the softs as you are in the louds. If you're not sure whether or not you're successfully supporting, go back and review our flute tube episode five that's all about support and how to really know if you're supporting. And I would especially practice softs with support when you're thinking about dynamics. So practice scales, both chromatic scales, major scales, minor scales, practice your favorite variety of scales and arpeggios, and do some of the techniques that we talked about in episode five to make sure that you're supporting. Those were things like sitting with your back against a wall so that you're holding yourself up with your abdominal muscles and playing while you do that. Sitting on an exercise ball that does the same kind of thing while you play the flute. You can sit on a chair and lift up your legs so that it engages your abdominal muscles. And some people like to kind of do a gentle crunch on the floor, lying on the floor and playing their flute while they're in this crunch so that they can feel that their abdominal muscles are connected. That's a great way to check in with your softs and make sure that you're still supporting them. So whether you're playing loud or soft, just remember with support, you want to be like a tree. Feel your weight really sinking through the ground as though you have roots. Feel very connected to the ground. Feel your weight in your toes and Feel very connected to your lower abdominal muscles where you have the core of your strength. You want to feel that support and that connection to your support, whether you're playing a big forte or whether you're playing just a small piano. The other thing that you don't want to allow to change as you change your air volume, your air speed, and your overall dynamic is the angle of your air. Just again, physically, when you blow less air, it's going to want to angle down more into your flute. When you blow faster or more volume of air, it's going to want to go more straight across instead of angling down into your flute at all. So you have to compensate for that. When you're playing softly and you know that the air is going to want to go down too much, you have to angle it up to compensate. And when you're playing loudly, you need to know that that extra volume of air it needs to be shifted down to keep the angle going into your flute enough. So in episode six, the episode on low register, we talked about how to angle your air down into your flute because just generally in the low register, you need to angle more into your flute. You can do that same thing in loud dynamics, that if you're playing really loud, think of aiming your air to your left elbow so that it doesn't go too high and you don't lose focus in your sound, your pitch doesn't suffer, that kind of thing. When you play soft, it's harder to deal with angling your air because you have to angle it up and that is more difficult physically than angling down. So that's what takes people sometimes a long time to figure out. But, this is where I'm going to show you. I have this great exercise that I believe originated with Trevor Y. And it shows how to angle air up 
when you get to a very soft dynamic. So the idea is that you start by blowing straight up your nose. You don't have to have your flute either. You can just blow up your nose. And then what you want to do is with your flute or with a head joint, angle, tilt the angle down until it just barely lets the air strike the far edge of your embouchure hole and make a tiny little sound. So like this. And the point of that exercise is you want to notice how far forward your jaw is. Even without your flute, if you're just blowing air up your nose, you can feel that your jaw is quite far forward. And then as you rotate the airstream around, it comes back a little. But when I make that little tiny bit of noise, my jaw is still very far forward. And my aperture between my lips is very small. You can do that to get a good sense of how you need to adjust with your embouchure to keep your airstream aimed high enough when you're playing pianos. So here are your dynamic assignments for this week. First of all, if you feel at all unsure whether you're really supporting, go back and review episode five. Be sure you have your support in place. If you feel uncertain about how airspeed, air volume, and air angle relate to each other, go back and review episode six, because we talk about how all those things interact in that episode. And then, practice your scales really softly. If you have favorite scale exercises, if you have favorite arpeggio exercises, play them very softly and be sure that your support never changes. And then everything that you play, check in with your support and your air angle. Be sure that when you change dynamics, your air angle never shifts around and that you never ease off of your support based on whether or not you're playing a soft or a loud dynamic. Do all of that and it should be a great way to check in with your dynamics and whether you're approaching them in a really flute healthy way.